Stylized Unit is a collection of 10 premium filters exclusively for Final Cut Pro customers. It includes mocha masking, tracking, as well as your ability to provide certain parameters with Beat Reactor. In this video, we're gonna explore how we can use Stylized Unit with text generators inside of our Final Cut Pro timeline. Okay, I'm here inside of Final Cut Pro. I've got a project in front of me with a clip and I'd like to add some text on top of that. I've already searched out a title in the dynamic titles category off the titles and generators sidebar. This title over footage, I'm gonna select this clip, press X in order to mark it. And then with the title selected, I'll press Q just to connect that, having it match the actual length of the clip underneath. Let's select the title and enter something besides headline text to begin with. So I'll type up here, memory followed by collection. And in order to move to the sub headline of text, I'll use these arrows on the top left hand corner and I'll just type in coming December. Let's select that subtext and just increase its size to match the length of the collection text. And I'll press the escape key to exit out of that text entry mode. Now, the first effect on our tour is atmospheric glow. This was added to Continuum in 2023.5 and is the 10th premium filter in stylized unit. It's quite a robust effect. And there are several presets that you can use specifically to work with text. So in order to find that atmospheric glow, head to your film style category and you'll see BCC plus atmospheric glow. Now by default, when you apply it to the text, it might blow it out. And in this example, I'm actually gonna just turn off the video clip, but rest assured, let's select the text. And just before heading over, I'm actually going to turn off the build in and out parameters. So there's no animation on the text, then head to the video inspector and click this handy effects editor badge at the top of the atmospheric glow effect in order to browse some presets. Now here on the left-hand side is all of the presets available. And there just so happens to be a category specifically for text that you can take advantage of. Simply click on blurred rays. We've got some blurred rays here with some prism. Excellent. Other effects like spooky orbs, which have some motion here in the smoke as well as in the orbs to create an atmospheric like effect. And what we're gonna settle on is these heavy, colorful, smoky rays. Okay, obviously this blows out the text, but rest assured, we're simply gonna go into the glow category and make a few changes. So I'll twirl down the glow category here. And first off, I wanna have this glow under the text source. So I'll bring that all the way up to hundred. Glow is still powerful because of the intensity and the radius. So let me bring down the intensity a bit. You can see that glow go down. Let's change the color actually to be a purplish red to mix in with our text. And then I'll bring down the radius. You can see how that's mapping around the alpha channel here. Excellent. In addition to this, we can actually have separate glows in the red, green, and blue channel and play with that as well. Let me twirl up the glow. You can also see some rays here on the text as well as an on-screen control to change where the rays are coming from. If we twirl down the volumetric rays properties, let's increase the length of the rays just to see what that does to our text and just play with the position here as well. We also have the ability to define the order of how rays shows up here in atmospheric glow. We can have it before the glow or post glow, which I'll do in this case, adds a bit of red to the rays. Let me bring down the overall brightness so we can see a bit of the background that comes around with this too. This is a collection of some smoke controls, not to mention orbs. If I twirl down smoke, we can see it's enabled. In fact, in this case, I'll just disable it to see the high impact it really has here on the scene based on the smoke and fog settings. I will turn this off for a second because I would like to focus on orbs. And one cool thing about these orbs, which are black right now, is that they actually auto animate. They're at a very low speed amount, you can see here too, but I'm gonna crank this up to 50 so you can see this on playback. Excellent. We can play with the count of orbs, not to mention the scale, to create some interesting effects. In addition to orbs, we've also got smoke and fog as well as light flicker that will auto animate. 
Once satisfied, you can press apply and then just head right back over to Final Cut in order to preview your atmospheric glow effect on text and tweak it from there. Okay, I'm gonna remove atmospheric glow from the source and let's take a look at another filter. For this, we're gonna go to the BCC stylize category in the effect browser. I'd like you to apply video glitch. This is a fantastic effect for getting some glitchiness right across your text source. The most amazing thing about this, just like atmospheric glow, is the amount of presets that you have to play with. If we go back into the effects editor, we can see a large amount of presets. And some of my favorite actually have the word combined in here, which use several of the parameter groups like block damage and shift to create glitchy based text treatments. In this case, I'll just choose shake Y extreme and settle on shake Y heavy. I'm gonna animate the mix value inside of Final Cut Pro to transition from here just to the regular text in order to have an intro text treatment. So let's apply that. I'll head into Final Cut Pro and I'll just do a full screen playback so we can see that glitch carry on over. I'll press the space bar and press escape to exit. And let's create a two second animation. So I'll move my playhead to the two second mark. And here I'll select the text. And in the inspector, I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the video glitch properties and add a keyframe next to mix, setting the value to be zero. And then I'm gonna to go to the beginning of my text here and let's just bring that mix value up to hundred, adding it another keyframe. We can see that we get this lovely transition from some really glitchy text to no glitch at all. All right, now let's remove that glitch from the text and look at our last example here. In this case, we're gonna head back to the film style category and actually choose film grunge. I want you to see what just happens when I apply it to some text. You might be able to make out in the white here a bit of some scratches as well as dust moving on the text, which could be extremely useful but this could also work over the video footage that we saw earlier in this exercise. So let me remove film grunge from here. I'm gonna turn on the video clip on the primary storyline, and I've already compounded the text and this background. So let's play through here just to see what we have. I'm gonna press escape, and now we're gonna apply the film grunge effect where we see it's on both the text and the background. Now there are certain elements that move very quickly in this effect, and we're just going to bring down the opacity of some of those. So I'm going to bring the opacity down of stains and splotches. We'll keep scratches and keep dirt, but also minimize hair. Any of these individual parameters you can tweak to build your own look. So for instance, with dirt, I'll decrease the amount. I'll actually head to scratches, increase the amount here, and the width of some of these scratches, as well as the variance to change the pattern of them on the screen at this point in time. Last but not least, one thing I love is going to the bottom of the effect, we can play with a gate weave property, bring down the speed though. In this case, I won't introduce flicker, but I will add a vignette. We can also play with the size of it and enable some grain, just to give this the look of old damaged film. If I move my player to the beginning, we can see how this film grunge can work on both text and a video clip. As you can see, there's a lot that you can do by adding stylized unit filters onto text inside of Final Cut Pro. There's a lot of effects that I haven't covered like prism and film glow, and I suggest that you check that out. For more tips and tricks just like this, check us out at borseffects.com and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.